Hello everybody and welcome back to Analog Vernacular. Today we're going to be playing some more Baldur's Gate 3 and this looks like a party who is ready for their level 11s. So let's do this thing. Level 11, let's go. Carlock is excited, you see her little dance? Almost max level. Ooh, level 6 spells, okay. Okay, so 80 HP. Level 6 spell slot unlocked. Heal. 70 healing. It's just a flat 70. Heal the target's wounds and remove blindness and any diseases. Okay, that's pretty cool. I probably won't keep that one prepared, but if I just need a really, really heavy heal, I can always just pop that on after a fight, you know? But who knows? Maybe we'll see. Maybe we'll find a really tough fight that this would actually be really useful on, but since we can only use one... Hero's Feast. You and everyone around can't be poisoned, diseased, or frightened. Your HP increases, and you make wisdom saves with advantage? That seems pretty good. I can imagine a situation where we would just pop that after a long rest. Because look, it lasts until your next long rest, so... Let's say we go to camp. We wake up in the morning, and we pop our one spell, which is Hero's Feast. And then at that point, we can't be poisoned, diseased, or frightened. We get an HP boost right away. Which, it doesn't say that's temp HP, but... I don't know how that would work. And you make wisdom saves with advantage. It's pretty interesting. Um, we've seen Sunbeam, and Sunbeam is pretty damn powerful. I'll bet you that our girl, uh, Shadowheart will also get access to this. Wall of Thorns. Create a wall of pliable, twisted thorns surrounded by entangle entangling vines. And Windwalk. Transform yourself and all nearby uh, party members into tiny clouds of mist to avoid attacks. I wonder if we could have used that in, like, the prison to get to, uh... Floric. Honestly, I think that we'll probably, just for the time being, use Hero's Feast. Yeah, Sunbeam seems pretty good, too. Also blinds, which is pretty cool. Okay, Shadowheart. Really? You don't get Sunbeam? Crazy. I really would have thought. Okay, but... Let's see, you go to 80 as well, level 6 spell slot, nothing else. So let's see these, Blade Barrier. Summon a wall of razor sharp blades that turns the area into difficult terrain and damages anyone foolish enough to come close. Okay, seems like pretty good CC. Raise a corpse as a heinous mummy that fights by your side. Harm. Reduce the target's maximum hit points, but never below 1. Oh, that's kind of crazy. So if we run into an enemy that's uh, capable of getting some really good heals, then harm could potentially just knock off 84 HP that can't be healed back. It's a con save. And even on a save, target still takes half damage. Oh, but its maximum hit points are not reduced. Okay. And then Planar Ally, beseech one of these otherworldly entities for aid. And you also have Heroes Feast and Heal. I think it's between Blade Barrier and Harm right now. Let's try out Blade Barrier. A decent CC. If we run into the right fight where somebody's healing, or is capable of doing heals and we're struggling with it and like fail or something, then we'd go in with harm, probably. Because harm could be pretty useful in that situation. Okay. Carlock, our barbarian. 104 HP. And class features Relentless Rage. Once per short rest, if you drop to zero hit points while in rage, you gain one hit point instead of being downed. Love that. Cool. All right. Keeping the party alive just a little bit longer. And will. Oh, 
you finally get your warlock spell slot. He has three now. <laughs> He's had two since the beginning of the game. Okay, gained a spell. Circle of Death. Sculpt a massive sphere of entropic energy around a creature. Devastate the target and all surrounding creatures. On save, targets still take half damage. Arcane Gate, create two linked teleportation portals. Eye Bite, your eyes become black corridors, walled in teeth. Your gaze capable of inflicting dread, sickness, or putting creatures to sleep. That one seems kind of crazy. While concentrating, you may cast Eye Bite without expending a spell slot. Okay, so while you maintain concentration, you can recast it. Gotcha, okay. Flesh to stone, atrophy a foe, restraining them until they temporarily turn to stone. The target will petrify if it does not succeed at saving throw within three turns. Okay. I think on Tactician, a lot of our enemies probably would be able to do saves pretty easily. I mean, if we find the right enemy, that could be good. It's a con save. And then you've got create undead. Yeah, it might just be Circle of Death. Now, for replacements, though. I want to keep counter. Hypnotic pattern. Oh, I can't access the sixes as well. Okay. Maybe on the next level I'd be able to switch out one of those for a six. It's kind of what I was hoping for. Alright, I need to read this again, because somebody tried to tell me something in a comment, and I was like, I don't think that's... That's not what I read in the tooltip, so... Make your attacks deal an additional 1 to 6 necrotic damage. Damage to the target and give it disadvantage on an ability of your choosing. So, this would... The, the extra necrotic damage would also work for... Your... Eldritch Blasts, right? So I guess Hex by itself, even if you're not good at picking the right thing to Hex for the disadvantage on ability checks, the extra damage is what people like about it. I mean, I guess it ha it's, it's dual. Like, both of them can be good. But I think I forgot about the fact that it can do the 1d6 Necrotic. But even still. All right. All right, what if I wanted to take Flame Strike? What would I switch out for that? I've never used Hypnotic Pattern. could be good, though. It could be in the right situation. Eight to forty-eight, eight to sixty-four, ten to sixty. Eh, we're fine. I don't need to switch out anything. I think I'm good. Oh, I still get to pick another spell. I didn't realize. So I can take Flame Strike if I really want it.
Maybe I'll take Dimension Door, though. Like I said, we've got some pretty good damage dealers. And Dimension Door could give us another option for moving people around in some unique ways. Teleport yourself and up to one adjacent ally to a place you can see. Yeah. That could be good. We'll try that. Let's see how that goes. All right. Everything, despite everything. Now. I should probably bring Lizelle. Let's go get Lizelle. Soldier. Let's bring the egg too, just in case if these guys don't go aggro on us and they're like tied to some other crash, there could be something with the egg here. Um, yeah, yeah. What's on your mind? Ah, oh, come on. Oh. Is it is done. AC-18 is pretty good. There might be better stuff, but let's see. She's doing a 7 to 17 with the Sword of Justice. Let's check her level up. 125. Highest HP we have in the party. Improved extra attack. You can make two additional attacks after attacking with your main hand weapon. Cool. So you get three attacks each turn. That's wild. Okay, 6 to 15 on that, 6 to 16 on that. That's the one with Shockwave. Let's see, Ketherix Warhammer. 7 to 19 with a 1d4 Psychic. Yeah, maybe we'll take that. Okay, 6 to 15. Oh yeah, wait, hold on, hold on. If I take that, let's see, did I buy those gloves? I actually don't even remember. There were some gloves that could turn us in, basically made us act like a construct, and I can't remember if we bought them or not. Shoot, I don't think we did. Okay, weapon, weapon, weapons. Where are all the gauntlets? Okay, here we go. It's these ones, right? Circuitry interface. You are considered a construct. Your weapon attack rolls have advantage, and you have resistance to lightning damage. So, when we use that class action, which is a bonus action, we can use that thing without stunning ourselves. 
correct? I have to try it. Obviously, we have to actually pop it as an action, so... Is that true? I think that's true. Okay, dominate beast. Oh, there's circuitry interface. It's over here. Okay, so at the start of each battle, we'll need to pop that. Um, it actually has to recharge on short rest, too, which kind of sucks, but... Commander Strike, okay. Oh yeah, that was one we got in the last uh, level up. Okay, yeah, we'll try this setup. See how it goes. What boots you got? That makes no sense. <laughs> Let's find her some other boots. Yeah, that makes no sense. Um, Dancing Lights isn't useful either. Okay, boots and a necklace, and then we'll, we'll we'll move on pretty quick. Alright, you can take those. It'll give you Feign Death. Animal Friendship, Fog Cloud. That could be fine. No Opportunity Attacks at 50% or lower. Shatter and Key. Shatter could be nice to just give her... an option that's kind of an AoE. Steeped in bliss. And I also need to check something. So with her currently, she has these. Consuming more illithid parasites would mend your broken mind. Especially Khan is bad on her. Um, and Int and Wisdom isn't as much of a big deal. But, Khan kind of is. Okay, so that did not get rid of one. Yeah, it's not doing it. Hmm. That's so weird that they wrote that, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let me just try a couple more. If it doesn't do anything, we'll reload. Okay, so she's got four now. Yeah, it's not doing anything. Okay. I wonder why they wrote it that way. That really does make it sound like if you consume more of those parasites that, um, those would go away.
Maybe only the uh, super parasite would do it. All right, well, she's just going to have to have those minuses. Never, mind. Never wanted the easy path. Lazel, glad you could join us. The Kithraki have spread word of that artifact that you carry. Tell me, Lazel of Kalir. What reward do you think the Astral Prism will fetch once I pluck it from your corpse and present it to Vlakith? What honors, what riches will the Undying Queen grant me when I hand her the failed prince? This artifact contains the key to our freedom. It is not for the Lich Queen to take. I know exactly what the prism contains. The traitor prince who would hand us to Gake. The false heir's head will make a fine trophy for Vlakith. As for you, I will leave nothing behind but meat and shattered bone. Orpheus is the Githyanki's true prince. You will not take him. Damnable whelp. For a thousand years I have given my life to Vlakith. I will deliver to her the prince of the comet. She shall exalt me. The Gish will record my great deed in Slate. Jamar Zala Vlakith! Okay. Some other dialogues may have led to something else, but I don't know. They seem pretty intent on fighting us. Okay, what are we looking at here? These guys gonna try and summon more people in? Hard to say, but we've got two teleporters on each side. Death won't take me yet. Okay, let's try bringing in an elemental. Okay, we'll just toss that up there. You're gonna be using slashing, maybe psychic. Yeah, let's do a psychic for this. Because these guys tend to have a lot of passives and stuff that add psychic damage. Okay, you need circuitry interface. Taking position. Okay. Oh man, I forgot about the freaking parries. I thought the three attacks was only gonna work on melee. Cool. Evade attacks, enemies receive disadvantage on melee attacks against you. Shit, I forgot that doesn't give you movement back. That was dumb. No, that was actually dumb. Distracting strike. Nice, 22 damage as well. Well done. She doesn't have a long strider on either. OK, 
Okay, so is this another, like, wall that we create? Okay, we'll wait on that one, I guess. Knocked him down too. I love it. What are you doing there, buddy? I guess he's kind of blinded. Is that affecting his AI? Boy doesn't know what to do. I think he tried to teleport out. Wisdom save. That would have worked. That would have worked on Lazelle. She would have gotten held. Oh, the rift is a concentration. Good to know. So we need to hit this guy. Yeah, we need to hit that guy right now. Okay. Good to know. Um, what have you got? Multi attack. Descend on a creature to smash it with your tectonic might. And a seismic strike. 1426, 4 to 24. Bring down your arms like stone slabs, smashing nearby creatures, pushing them back three meters and making them wobble on trembling legs. Really, bro? 284s? It's fucked up. That ability. Like, look at how hurt she is already. Um, okay. We're gonna level four this. Hope this guy loses, uh, concentration. Oh, don't bullshit me. Okay, that didn't quite get the job done, unfortunately. Mm, you're not dead yet, but you might be soon. Stay focused. <laughs> Did not even realize. Okay, you're managing your concentration pretty well. Take your, your On the move. Forever dauntless. Okay, is this one a concentration? It probably is, right? Sure is. Okay, so let's just make sure that we don't do a concentration on whatever we do next. Um, damn. You need a short rest before you can use that again. Okay. Here goes nothing. <clears throat> right there. Okay. No more ads. No more ads. Swift and lethal. 
This is your end. Huge hit. Huge hit. Not so huge. Better. Okay, you still got a number of hits on you. Got frightened. <laughs> I want to stay in that moonbeam. Okay, bonus action for an elemental warp. Okay, 70 on that. 15 on that. Well, that was colossally disappointing. <laughs> Damn, with disadvantage too? bro um let's see are you still frightened you're still frightened um okay That's too many of those. Oh, that is a huge circle. Holy shit. Okay, let's see what else we've got up our sleeve for the time being. Um, you've got one AoE, but everybody's kind of in the way. Okay, three chances to do one damage. Um, I'm gonna put two on you and one on you. Um, let's make sure we got push on. Great.
Okay. Level 5 Blight. Uh, 45 ain't great. Yeah. The Frighten doesn't help, does it? Can't give up. Not now. Ooh, good roll on that. Heading there. Oh. That's the stuff. Oh my gosh, that death throw. On the victor's path. Okay. Well done. I was not expecting that to kill. I thought it'd do some damage, but did better than that. Yeah, sorry, Lay. <laughs> yeah, man, you don't roll very good on your 70s, do you, buddy? Okay, 10% probably ain't worth it. What do I have to lose? Good job, big guy. He's not been hitting this fight. Nothing important is ever easy. Why did you have to go there? Are you blind? Yeah, you are. Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> Finished off that one. They tracked the artifact on the spirit. You handled them well. Ready to fight. Okay. I'm 
exhausted. Better find somewhere to camp. Boots soon. of psionic movement. When a Githyanki casts fly, their next melee uh, weapon attack deals an additional one to four psychic damage. And Githborn flying boots. I mean, hell, these are for you, so. You didn't have good boots before. Now you have something you can actually use. Assume nothing. So why not? The inevitability of moral decay and its benefits. The benefits of moral decay? A lengthy essay on the inevitability of moral decay, the opportunities it presents, and the ways to capitalize upon them. Um, and keep in mind that this is in the home of the Emperor. Introduction, Chapter 1. Morality is not absolute. Chapter 2. Why moral decay is not immoral. Chapter 3. One man's decline is another man's gain. Chapter 4. Those who play and those who make the rules. Chapter 5. How to win the game. Yeah, I don't I don't trust you, bro. I don't trust you, Emperor. Not even a little bit. To silence. The following individuals are threats to our operation and need to be silenced. Lilar Thoran of House Alibakar. Irith of House Nashavar. House Okay, okay, Lord Hecath. Paterson. Is somebody else using this place as their base? I'm confused about whose stuff this might be. Inroads by arms dealer Gortash. Okay, so maybe this stuff isn't um, the Emperor's anymore. I don't really know how long the Emperor's been gone. Nine Fingers, here follows a report on the inroads upstart smuggler Enver Gortash has been making on the illicit arms trade in the Chianthar Valley. Though inroads badly understates the case, annexation would be more apt. The former black market leaders, the Knights of the Shield, and outside the city, the Zentarum, have largely been supplanted by Gortash's operation. Illegal arms have never been a major component of the guild's business, but given his apparent ambitions, it would be unwise to assume that Gortash will stop there. He bears watching closely. Bursar Uktar. Okay. So yeah, this place is being used by some other people. No time to rest. Okay. on my way what am I to do okay you've still got speak with dead well active so if anybody was able to be spoken to they'd be glowing ooh diamond did I get that last one sure did okay if not over then through what's in here This document serves as your official order from the Knights of the Shield to undertake a critical mission in Tether. The success of this mission depends on your ability to execute your duties with utmost precision, discretion, and loyalty to the Knights of the Shield. The primary objective is to gather intelligence on rumors of an uprising in the court of Queen Rindown in Daramar, Tether. The purpose of this intelligence will be the safeguarding of our trade relationships in the region. Note, meet with members of the Order of the Silver Chalice at your discretion, but beware that allegiances may not be as they appear. Location of reserve supplies. For nice use only, do not distribute. Buried behind Counting House. Path to Baldur's Gate near Upper City. Well, well then, okay. 
Hopefully that got marked on our map. I'm assuming it did. A splendid purple outfit. I don't know what you saw. I know it goes in there, but I don't know what you saw. I missed it. Seriously, they need to like put the camera where the thing is. It's upsetting. Um, We'll come back. We have to loot anyway. <laughs> I missed something though. Okay, is that any better than the ones that I've got on right now? 1d6 plus 3, 1d6 plus 2. That one's a 1d6 plus 3, that one's a d6 plus 2, but we have the additional 1 to 4 piercing to burning targets. Okay. So no, this isn't going to be better. Okay, okay, there we go. A ledger of potential investments lead, uh, investment leads in Kalimshan. And we've got note to all Knights of the Shield members. Please find within our latest intelligence on the city's lockdown and alternative smuggling routes to the upper city. Take note and destroy after reading. Okay, so what are the shields doing here exactly? And why did the gith find us? Also, what the fuck did we find here? I don't see any buttons. Um, where are you at, bro? Where's your button? Where's your button? 
Here we go. So what was that first perception check then? Weird. Um, okay, let's finish looting. We're not quite done. An Archduke's leadership. Public works. A pamphlet by the Gortash, uh, by, yeah, by the Gortash for Archduke voluntary campaign. As Archduke, Lord Gortash's top priority will be public works. To ensure that the city streets, sewers, docks, and most importantly, its walls and gates are properly maintained, no policy can be more important. Okay. This is our boy's hidden room. All right, Emperor, what you got in here for us? My old home. Thank you for bringing me back. Look around. You'll find some of my things still intact. Perhaps even useful to you. Sword of the Emperor. Shapeshifter Slayer. This weapon deals an additional 1d4 damage against shapeshifters or polymorphed creatures. The wielder has a plus two bonus to saving throws against spells. Cool. Um, we'll check what that but looks that like. Um, that might be good. My old sword. My first purchase as an adventurer. No use to me anymore. It's yours if you want it. Yeah, we'll have to see what that looks like on um, Carlock. I assume Polymorphed also includes Doppelgangers. A keepsake from my final voyage. Pinched in a moment of sentimentality. It's worth six gold. Pick up and add to wares. <laughs> I'm a That's monster. Curious. Disguises. We are what we appear to be, and so appearances matter. Okay, it's a heavy armor, so this might be a new one for Lizelle. Frightened immunity, you can't be frightened. A lithic protection if the wearer is infested by a mind flayer tadpole, they gain plus one to intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. Does infested mean probably the next step of a lithid persuasion? Probably, right? But maybe not. All right, charm or frighten a creature to gain 1d4 bonus to attack rolls and saving throws. That one does not count as heavy armor. Eager for battle. Minus one from intelligence, plus one from illithid protection. Okay. Sure, why not? It actually looks pretty good on her. This is probably still the one I like a little bit better. I like that one to four fire damage when you get hit, but we'll try those out. We're not using Charm or Frightened abilities very often, so I don't know about this one. We'll send it to camp for now. Can't give up now. Wish I had a bag of holding. Notes on Mind Flayer Anatomy. Insights gleaned from research. Mind flayers must consume the brains of humanoids in order to stay alive. It is said that the act of devouring a humanoid brain results in a state of euphoria and contributes to the thin glaze and mucus that coats a mind flayer's skin. Some researchers go so far as to claim that it is possible to deduce how recently another mind flayer fed and indeed the health of its victim from the viscosity of that mucus. Um, I'm realizing we've read this book before. Yeah, I've read that one. 
That's my butter fork. I love how I'm taking this shit and I'm just gonna sell it. There she is, in all her glory. Duke Stelme, my own partner. Need to find a way forward. That's curious. The chains I use to buy my meals. Villains and lawbreakers. You see, I tried to exercise morality where I could. An old container for brains. Empty. Shame. It would have been nice to find one to sustain me now. Recipe for fiddlehead soup. That might be worth a look. Maybe? A recipe for fiddlehead soup. A favorite meal of mine. When I had need of meals like that. Okay, apparently can't read it. We'll never know the I recipe. It's forbidden knowledge. Oh, he couldn't get through the door. I've got a long road ahead. <laughs> I was like, where is that guy? Um. At least things have stayed interesting. Seems simple enough. Another step forward. And I'm guessing that goes into the sewers again, huh? Yeah? Okay, lower city sewers. Another way in, huh? I'll take that. Okay, so we must have been pretty close to it at one point. I think this is where that fight took place. Um, I'm sorry, what? No, you can't be here. It's not safe. She has my scent. You're a doppel. Run. Do not stop until you feel sunlight and fresh air. This is, this is a doppel, right? There's no reason for Halson to be here. First, tell me what you're doing down here. Orin. She managed to seize me from our very own camp. No, nope. it's Orin herself. <laughs> she tormented me with blades and, and hot irons. I resisted. But then she forced me to drink a foul brew. The rabid, cursed blood of all manner of beasts. <laughs> Where's my insight check? <laughs> I lost control. I felt the bear take over. Blood crazed. And she forced me into a cage. Along with... 
with children taken from the streets. God, I hope that's not true. I was powerless to stop myself. Their screams, her laughter, it's all I can hear. I do not deserve to see the sun again. I hope she didn't actually make Allison do that. She's too strong. You have to turn around. Go. Let me buy you some time. She's coming for you. I think she's trying to keep us away from her base, which is probably down here somewhere. I will not run. I have no fear of Orin. Then you are an even dumber beast than your druid friend. Yep, it's her. Called it. Look at it, crawling and sniffing and rooting around in the filth. Is it my netherstone you seek, little piggy? <gasps> hush, hush. Orin will take care of you and your little pet. Gortash warned me you'd try something like this. <laughs> Gortash, the little lord of darkness. <laughs> I know him well. Yes, yes, and he knows me. Knows how my blades sculpt and carve this city. I could peel a fine pelt from the mud I caught sniffing at your heels. Drag skin from flesh, from bone. I will not slice. His kind die too easily. The murder lord demands a better offering. Something new. Sticky, sweet, and delicious. He wants you. So does everybody else. I'm afraid he'll have to wait his turn. The murder lord does not need permission to kill. You are dull. A blunt blade unfit to flay. But you could be sharpened. Thin and jagged. Yes, I will tell you what to do. God, her eyes creep me out so much. Enough of these riddles speak plainly. You'd prefer my whispers in the tyrant's tongue, hmm? You've heard Gortash's whispers. I see how your skull swarms with his promises. He whinges and wails over the crown of Carsus, wanting to command it without me. Oh, how I long to slit his poxy smile from ear to ear. But I can't touch him. He bound my blade when we first conspired. Gortash didn't want me at first. Didn't trust me. I wonder why. Got me to wag my tongue, swear an oath never to hang him from the hooks. Drip drain him into father's open jaws. You must kill the tyrant. Take the netherstone from his corpse and bring it to my temple. We slice and shred each other. The survivor claims the stones. What's left of the other is bars. Agree, and I will bring my assassins to heal. They watch you always, longing to spray the crimson from your veins. Refuse me. And you'll learn what happens to those who defy Baal's doctrine. So will your friend. Orin demands a fight to the death. The prize for the victor, the nether stones, and the chance to control the crown alone. Accept, and you must kill Gortash. 
Refuse and your companion's life may be forfeit, as might your own. Orin's assassins will hunt you like prey for slaughter. So the implication is that she does actually have him. Um, I don't know enough about the lore of Doppels. I don't think that they, do they like need the person to like physically touch to take their blood or what to turn into them? Or do they just have to see them to be able to turn into them? Um, I'm, I'm, I just don't know if she actually has Halcyn or not, you know? So you're stabbing your ally in the back, or rather you're asking me to. Allies? <laughs> Oh no, we had a balance. The chosen three. <laughs> but it tumbled when you turned the Bone Lord to ash. Now, Gortash tries to gouge me from the city. That festering inadequate thinks me a flesher, butchering and cleaving only to whip the herd towards his tin men's oppression. You. Gore him like a pig prepped for the spit. Only then will you be sweet and sharp, ready for the murder lord's purpose. She's a psycho. Oh my gosh. Sounds like you can't defeat Gortash without me. You need me. Need? No, no, no. I do not need. You are made of nothing. Meaningless flesh and bone. I do not need. I offer. Ball's age approaches, and you could be there to see it. An idol of flesh. Made to welcome his bleeding dawn. There is time for you yet. Time to save. Do not underestimate his steel watch. Seek their cradle in the lower city and skewer their skull meat. Make them rust and blood. Then you can gore the lordling again and again and again. The implication listen, is that there's a brain. Listen close, bone killer. Step in my domain while the tyrant still sucks air, and I will carve your failure into your pretty plaything's skull. <laughs> Bring me his stone, and I will set the bait free. <laughs> Only then can you and I make exquisite butchery. The victor will set the world to slaughter. <laughs> that is Baal's offer. He will not make another. Yeah, I miss the days when uh, I was scared of Lazelle. <laughs> Well, can, can we go back? Can we go back to the days when we were scared of Lazelle? Please? Um... Patient log. Okay. Um, we're gonna have to finish this in the next episode, because that went... That was a surprise, and that put me over by ten minutes. But, I, I, I can't leave you on this cliffhanger. I have to go and see if he's gone. So let's see, he was over, he is gone. He's fucking gone. She actually took Halson. I wonder how, I wonder if it can be a number of different companions that get taken. And I'd have to assume that it's whatever companions you use the least, but. Cause like, can you imagine if they took Carlock from us right now? Just because we happen to have Lazelle in the party? Um, that would be upsetting. I, I wonder. I wonder if it's always Halson or what, but 
I don't know. Somebody let me know if it was a different person for your playthrough. Um, at any rate, I am way over time, so let's end it here. Thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Have a good one, everybody. I'd like to give a very special shout out to my patron supporters, Darren York, ZTD, Knife Namase, Kyle the Monarch, Andrew Smith, Chris Murphy, JW, Quinless, Vlada101, Andy Ford, Bruce Wizzle, Black Mamba90, Eureka Gecko, A Happy Fat Panda, Dennis McKinnon, Turkeyfoot27, Pato Kuto, and Nadia N. If you would also like to join this tier or any others, check out my memberships or my Patreon in the description down below.